Hey, hey everyone, it's Year Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series on the German Cruiser Line. This is the Tier 4 Karlsruhe. The Karlsruhe consisted of two light cruisers built in 1911 for the German Imperial Navy before World War I. The two ships of the class were Karlsruhe and Rostock. The class was a product improved Magdeburg class cruiser, and the primary improvements were a higher top speed and a larger hull, which also improved sea keeping slightly. They featured the same armor and armament as the Magdeburg, though. Both ships were powered by steam turbines with a mix of coal and oil producing the steam for those steam turbines, and the ships were originally armed with 12 4 inch 45 caliber guns and only two 20-inch torpedo tubes. Uh, it's interesting that in-game this is not what we get, and I'm actually quite grateful that this isn't what we get in-game because, my word, a third ship with 4-inch guns would just be absolutely brutal. In terms of service history, Karlsruhe was sent to the Caribbean to relieve Dresden. She arrived in July of 1914, just days before World War I began. Once she arrived, she met up with the SS Kronprinz Wilhelm and armed her to act as a commerce raider. While transferring equipment to the Kronprinz Wilhelm, the Royal Navy cruisers found them and pursued Karlsruhe only to lose her. During World War I, she would sink 16 ships, merchant ships, totaling a 72,805 tons of shipping. While en route to a new patrol area near Barbados, a spontaneous explosion destroyed the ship. The crew was able to get back to shore safely, though. Rostock operated with the German High Seas Fleet as a torpedo boat leader. During the Battle of Dogger Bank, she led the battle cruisers of the first scouting group near the British coast. When she survived the battle and went on to screen the German fleet during the famous Battle of Jutland. At Jutland, she saw extensive action and is credited with assisting in the sinking of the HMS Nomad and the HMS Nestor. She'd eventually be torpedoed by British destroyers, and while being towed by German torpedo boats back to safety, she was discovered by the HMS Dublin. And in order to prevent her capture by the Dublin, Lynn Rostock was scuttled. In terms of their in-game gameplay performance, um, we'll start with the positives first. This is the first ship in the line to feature torpedoes as, as well as hydroacoustic search. Um, she does now have six-inch guns, and that's about the extent of what's really good for her. She is quite slow for a Tier 4 cruiser and has an absolutely atrocious rudder shift time. It is terrible. Terrible. Um, the gun arcs, we don't see much of an improvement over the Dresden and, and uh, Königsberg before. It just, the, the ship in general just feels really, really, really weak in the, in the gunnery department. She also has a really low fire chance for six inch guns, and it's only after adding Demolition Expert that she actually starts to compare with ships like the Phoenix, the Omaha later, which she does see as well as the um, the St. Louis, the U.S. St. Louis <laughs> at Tier 3. Uh, overall, really not a fan of the ship due to the poor maneuverability and rather bland gunplay. Uh, the torpedoes, they do have a 6K range, which at this tier is actually quite usable, but I just... Mm, not a fan. Yep, I'll just... I'll just say it. I'm just not a fan of, of this ship at all. Let's dive on into those stats. She has 22,700 hit points. She does have 60 millimeters of armor, and you will be pleased to know that this is the first German ship that is going to have a turtleback, or sorry, this is the first German cruiser that has a true turtleback armor scheme. You can see here that she has a 60 millimeter outer hull plating, and if we take off the top, we can see she has a 40 millimeter sloped Citadel armored deck, as well as a just horizontal armored deck, and uh, that you know that makes her reasonably difficult to Citadel. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it's impossible; it's certainly possible. But uh, most of the time, it's going to have to come from long range, or it's going to have to you know punch through quite a bit of armor. This turtle back angle isn't really all that extreme, and as a result, uh, a lot of battleships do seem to penetrate through it quite easily. So you definitely do not want to expose a broadside in this ship if you can avoid it. 
The main battery consists of eight six inch 45 caliber guns. They have a max range of 11.7 kilometers, a six and a half second reload time, and a 12% fire chance. That's with Demolition Expert. It's 10% without. Uh, the upside to this ship's gunnery is that the AP, this is where we start to see German AP become absolutely potent. Look at that AP shell damage, 3,700 damage. That's really quite good for a Tier 4 cruiser. Let's go dive on over to uh, Phoenix here, and we'll, we'll show you what Phoenix is sitting at. 3,100, so you've got 600 more damage over the Tier 4 Phoenix in terms of just raw AP damage. So if you can get a Citadel hit, you're going to be doing 600 more damage than a Phoenix would be. In addition to that, your overall normal penetration and over-penetration with AP is also higher um, than Phoenix's is. The uh, downside to that is obviously the absolutely terrible HE damage, which is only 1,800. She does have a secondary armament. Uh, yeah, 388. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, gotta give the Germans credit. The 88 was a fantastic gun, but uh, <laughs> not on a ship. Three and a half K firing range on it. Nine percent fire chance. It's sad that that 88 almost has as good a fire chance as the main battery does. Uh, in terms of torpedoes, she does have eight torpedoes in two. Uh, sorry, she has four dual launchers. <laughs> Uh, two per side, so four per side, eight total. They actually have a really good torpedo arcs, uh, and that definitely makes them very usable. 6K range, 57 knots, uh, 1.4K detection range, which is actually really not that good um, for this tier, uh, and given the speed of the torpedoes. Lots of time to react. However, at tier four, I find most players aren't quite up to speed yet with the whole WASD thing, and so they can be quite useful. Uh, the anti-aircraft suite, it, it, it's its those 88s, <laughs> all three of them. Uh, a whole whopping 5 DPS at 3K. Totally going to shoot down an aircraft with that. Uh, max speed, 27.5 knots. Uh, turning circle is 590 meters, which is impressive, but that 6.8 second rudder shift time really betrays the ship a lot. It, it feels like the ship has, and I don't know if this stat exists or not, but this is just subjective. For a seven, roughly seven second rudder shift time, it feels like the ship, the ship's rudder authority, like at part rudder, it doesn't seem like it has that much control over the ship at part rudder. And so it takes forever for you to actually get full over to get your 590 meter turning radius. And it's really just, it's so sluggish, it's not fun to play. I do not enjoy playing this ship at all. And the games that I did play in her were quite frustrating, even though I did reasonably well. Detection range by sea, 10.3 kilometers, which, oh, that's not good. I mean, it, it you don't have enough range to really take advantage of this. You know, 11.7K, again, going back to the Phoenix here, because this is by far my favorite favorite tier four cruiser you know we've got a 15.3 kilometer firing range with more guns and yeah okay it's got 11.6 kilometer detection range but i've got way more range to use compared to Karlsruhe. so i i just don't i'm just not a fan also phoenix has way better aa so to me it feels like the Karlsruhe is just really mismatched for tier four like we could probably find another cruiser to slot in at Tier 4 and bump Karlsruhe down to Tier 3, and she'd fit in just fine there. Um, in terms of upgrades, main armaments mod 1. That's going to be the standard for a little bit. And then on t for the second slot, propulsion systems mod 1 to decrease the chances of our engines becoming incapacitated as well as decrease the time it takes to repair them. Anyway, uh, we'll talk more in the battle video. All right, so this match is going to be, if I remember correctly, a tier five match. And it is going to be on big race. One of my favorites. Nope, it's a tier four, tier three, tier four match. I was wrong. Anyway, uh, there are two carriers for this game, so this is legit. Uh, battleship count, not, uh, yeah, there's four of them. That, that's, that's plenty enough to give you an idea. 
Uh, big race, again, this is one of my favorite maps. Usually I don't like being on this side over here, but because I'm up here, we're going to go ahead and we are going to head that way. Uh, just as a quick reminder, this is German Hydroacoustic Search, which means 5K detect range at Tier 4. 5K to detect enemy ships is just awesome. There's nothing better than being able to pop your hydro and see ships in smoke 5k away. Um, that is probably, that and the torpedo arcs are probably the only strong suits to this ship. Um, and the AP damage if you ever get Citadel hits. So right away off the start of the map, we are going to go ahead and we're going to go towards these islands. You don't want to really hang out in this wide open area. If you can avoid it, you're just asking to eat a whole bunch of uh, enemy shells. You're easy to spot. And I just don't care for it. Uh, you know, the other part of this is that uh, if, you know, you get lucky, sometimes you'll catch ships broadside if you start going towards the center of the map wall up here. And, and the ships that would be broadside are the ships that are going along the northern edge to the east, you know, on the A or B line towards the 9 and 10. Now, the torpedoes do reload fairly quickly, so we are going to go ahead and launch a set of torpedoes here at the end of this island. Uh, it seems a bit ridiculous to do this, in, in truth, the, the, with the limited range on these torpedoes. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I've been spotted. <laughs> um, yep, now I've really been spotted. I've been detected. But we went ahead and we launched those torpedoes because you just never know what you're going to find to come around an island. And in this, you'll see I'm, I'm turning all the way around. I've already started to turn my guns all the way around, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch torpedoes at this Kohlberg and hope that I can get him with a set of torpedoes. Um, but we will go ahead and we'll start engaging. Ouch. 1,300 hit damage taken off. Those torpedoes, unfortunately, did not hit. Uh, they were actually pretty close to hitting now. I, I'm not sure what caused the, um, the the miss there, but you'll see we are racking up some pretty decent damage. Wow, somebody really hit him. But you can see we're racking up some pretty decent damage here on this uh, Kohlberg. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's okay. It, it's okay. I, I guess, uh, the, you know, when they expose broadsides, you can get some pretty good hits in there. Oh, will we get the kill? Will we? Will we? Well, it looks like it. Kill secure? Yeah. And first blood for our troubles. Anyway, uh, on to a St. Louis. There's a dirt ski up here. Really not worried about the dirt ski. Uh, usually German cruisers are, are pretty effective um, destroyer hunters simply because of the fact that they do have such long range hydro. The downside, of course, is that AP up against the destroyers, generally speaking, is not nearly as strong as, um, you know, other nations would be with their AG. So we're actually going to go ahead. Oh, he popped up. Pot shot. We are actually going to go ahead and we are going to use this Dertsky smoke against him. You can see here, the only reason we're being detected is because of aircraft or the occasional, occasionally the Dertsky will pop out. I'm not worried about his torpedoes because they're really short-range torpedoes. And so we're going to go and see if we can't get ourselves a St. Louis to sink. That would be the nice thing. Now he's within range and you can see here, I'm, I'm, my plan was is I'm going to turn and go to the right. So I'm going to make a right-hand circle turn. And the premise of that is... is is that I can bring my other torpedoes to bear and it takes me into cover. It takes me into cover with the island here and it takes me out of this engagement. You can see here that he is most likely not going to be turning into, you know, well, we're not going to be able to launch a set of torpedoes at him just yet. We're going to continue to charge though because you just never know when you might get lucky. And we got to be cognizant of the enemy torpedo bombers there off to our right hand side and our torpedoes on our right hand side are going to come up a little bit this kawachi is not paying attention to me so we will go ahead and do that uh, just checking the torpedoes to see if maybe he'll come around this mountain over here and we're going to go ahead and launch torpedoes at the kawachi now i make 
God, this 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 battle is filled with so many comedies of error. My original intent was to go to the right, and then I realized, no, that's a bad idea. And unfortunately, what this means is that I beach myself while aircraft are in route. <laughs> no! Oh my, this looks terrible. And will it... Will the beach save me from... Oh, yes! Well, we only took the one torpedo, and unfortunately, we didn't hit the Kawachi with anything that was going to, you know, do damage to him. That, that's kind of rough. And you know those other torpedoes? Yeah, they ran out of steam. So, not getting any lucky here, and I really thought this battle was going to basically be over. But, uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky with things. So... Uh, totally anticipating that Kaiser to turn out like in a big way, not turn in. And again, we're going to shoot at the Kawachi in the hopes that we can get him to start on fire. Unfortunately, we have yet to succeed in starting said fire. And there are torpedoes on the way to him. Oh, look, the Kaiser is maneuvering. I wonder if that means my torpedoes found a home. Two of them do, and that was quite nice of him to, you know, find himself in there. And, uh, you know, again, going to be looking to turn out and away from this fight to try and get away as best I possibly can. Unfortunately, you know, we're kind of trapped by this island, which means we've got to wigwag and, and pray that there's enough of an angle. Oh, we got a fire on him. Uh, that means he will most likely burn. And, ooh. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, uh, we're, we're trying to expose as little as we can here, and, and since I'm getting further and further away, it's becoming easier and easier for me to dodge his incoming fire. Same with this Kawachi. So I can stay in this fight a little bit longer. Hopefully I can get a, a second fire on him since he is a burning, burning, burning. Um, but the, the key here is to continue to wigwag. Now our team... Oh, ow get rid of that fire right away uh, it, it's it sucks it's unfortunate that you have to burn the repair party so early but it really is critical to the uh, you know long-term survival here so again we're just we're continuing to use he because at this point he's he's already on fire once i'm trying to get him on fire again i'm gonna try and get this kawachi on fire because oh yes okay so we got a second fire on him uh, the kawachi um no, our shell's not coming in. Okay, so the shell's just landed. Uh, you know, 1,200 damage. Now everything's out of range, and this this sucks. This is the part about Carl's Rue that I don't like. It, it's the range. It's the lack of maneuverability. I mean, it just... The whole ship as a whole is not, not very much fun to play. So Kawachi's over there, and you can see here... Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to my mini-map and did not realize that the Kawachi was going away from me. So we will correct that and set out the second salvo here. Uh, 56,000 damage so far in this match. We've got only got 5,000 hit points left. Quick check of the mini-map shows that we are definitely in the wrong. Aha! Kawachi on fire. And so now that he's on fire, you know, we're behind an island. We're about to become masked, so that's kind of a problem. Lost a Friant to uh, Dertsky. Or, sorry, to a Langley, the Dertsky. He got the Dertsky before he went down. Uh, so far, the map, you know, looking pretty good. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we could have gone about this. Now, I've chosen... Uh, to go back to our cap, and the reason for that is quite simple. There are two ships there, and really the only thing that's in the area that can engage them is the South Carolina. Uh, the Miyogi could, in theory, engage, but I'm not overly confident that he's really all that interested in doing so. So we're going to go ahead, and while we're going over there, we're going to continue to fire at this Kawachi as long as we have range. You can see there the Phoenix just went down, which is a good thing. Pay attention to that Wyoming. You're going to see him again at the end of this match, um, unfortunately. And, okay, so we, we started the Quachi on fire again. That always is a, a benefit. You start racking up some damage, and, and he burned his damage control party earlier, so this is pretty much all free damage. Now... I'm detected by aircraft, so that makes this next move a little bit more risky. But uh, South Carolina is, is and the that that's in my and and I'm me. 
that that's about it right now. So Miyogi, you can see, is very interested in going up and playing with the uh, carriers, the enemy carriers, and the Wyoming. That Quachi went down, by the way. We didn't get the kill. But uh, I'm using this big old island here to keep this Wyoming from being able to get guns on me. Now, my real hope was is that I'd be able to launch kind of a pseudo-surprise attack on him involving torpedoes. But because of the... Um, because of the, the aircraft, it's very difficult to do so. And, of course, we have so much AA fire from this thing that, uh, you know, we just we just munch aircraft, right? No. So there's really not anything we can do to go ahead and uh, get rid of the aircraft from this plan. So we're just going to have to work around them. And you can see here just kind of pre-planning, looking at the mini-map. Uh, you know, he's 8k out. If he stays on his current path, he just barely w will be in the, uh... He'll just barely be in the torpedo arc. And if you're ever wondering how uh, to launch torpedoes at ships that are approaching, if you look at their icon and draw a line from it uh, to your, your torpedo range circle, you can actually determine whether or not the... Uh, he will travel into your torpedoes by the time he gets there. Now, you'll have to pay attention to your line, your vis vision line. There is a lot white line there in the middle. That'll help tell you whether or not you can get, uh, you'll get that or not. Okay, so Mr. Wyoming here, we're going to get ready to launch a set, launch the other set. And now it's time to fire at him because he is... You know, he's got a lot of hit points left. He's got a, certainly enough to kill me if he gets a good shot off. And kind of does. And then goes down, which is nice. So now we need to worry about torpedo bombers. Yep, switch to the torpedo bombers. I don't care about dive bombers at the moment. Cut the, cut the engines! Cut the engines! We cut! Oh, okay, so apparently the torpedoes drop to the right. Of where those, uh, well, be our left looking at the torpedo bombers, but no worries. We were able to go ahead and avoid th those torpedoes. And now it's just a matter of going up north to, you know, join the fight. Unfortunately, because of this battle at our own base... Ooh, Langley just popped up. Because of this battle at our own base, you know, we've got two battleships that are really out of place for further play. Thankfully, this Langley shows up and allows myself and this Miyogi to go chase after it. Now, Mr. Flux Cyanide is over there, and, uh, you know, to me right now, it looks like he's going to go after our Kaiser, as well as our two carriers and the South Carolina. That means that I should be able to go and sneak and get the carrier over here with the Miyogi uh, should best laid plans of mice and men. We are up to 68,990, basically 69,000 damage. This is, this is a quite a fantastic game already at this point, so I really shouldn't feel too bad, but, uh, you know, sometimes you just want to do better. Uh, okay, so we are detected by aircraft. There's the Langley. He pops up. You'll see I'm going to fire one salvo of HE and switch immediately to AP, and that's because the Langley Citadel is v relatively easy to hit. Uh, it's basically a midship and just slightly aft, and you'll see here. And there's two Citadels. 9,000 damage in one salvo. Not too shabby. And there's another one. So at this point, uh, I make a pretty big mistake. Now, the reason why I say that is because if I would have stayed right here on this side of the island, we probably would have killed this uh, Langley with relatively, relative ease and with uh, not too much problems. You can see here I'm able to shoot over the island, but I'm not, I'm not getting any penetrating hits. And unfortunately, I didn't. And so this Wyoming decides he's going to make a stink of my existence and... Unfortunately, I turn a little broadside. Oop! <laughs> Misses me. <laughs> Dang it! We didn't quite get the, the torpedoes off to try and sink this Langley. And unfortunately, we die. So this is kind of the end of this match. Uh, we do end up winning, obviously. They only have two ships left, one of which is about to die. 
But uh, I want to take this time to kind of discuss a little bit about what I think, you know, you heard me already say a couple times that I'm really not happy with the ship. Um, and you can kind of see why. The ship is pretty sluggish. And in spite of the mistakes that I made, and trust me, mistakes were made, um, I, I feel like this battle was not of the norm. There was a lot of luck involved. I mean, I got two torpedo hits off on a battleship that wasn't paying attention that added, I think it's like 28,000. Maybe it's not quite 28,000, but, you know, at least 15,000 damage. I've got a couple of fires in there that happened. You know, RNG blessed me with a couple of fires that uh, did some long burning. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't care for this ship. It just seems way too reliant upon enemy stupidity to really take advantage of. This is in stark contrast, by the way, to the fantastic, and I do mean fantastic, tier 4 US cruiser, which is the Phoenix, which doesn't have any of these problems. It's maneuverable. It's a relatively small profile when nose in. It has great torpedo arcs for a cruiser. The torpedoes aren't as useful or not as long range, but they do pack quite a wallop. But more importantly, the gunnery aspects on it. Yes, the Phoenix has really high arcs, but it has a pretty good rate of fire to go with it. And more importantly, the ship just feels far more maneuverable and far better to me. And with that added range, you know, it does really well at engaging battleships at longer ranges. Whereas right now, I, I couldn't. You know, you're, you're limited to 12k, you just don't get around that. And so I really think more range would really help Karlsruhe out. Okay, so that's the end of the match. Uh, 84,831 damage, one sink, 1,054 base XP, which I think is a touch low for that level of damage. You can see there, torpedoes did 16,162 damage, and of course, fires did more, and there's the credits and XP screen. Anyway, did you guys have as much problem with Karlsruhe as I did? I, I really don't enjoy the ship, and let me know down in the comments what you guys felt of her. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.